So this is my mini excavator. Uh, well, at least in uh, North America, they consider this a mini excavator. I think in the UK, they consider it a midi, mid-size. Um, so this is Sani SY50U. It's powered by Yanmar Motor. Got Kawasaki hydraulics on it. If you're wondering what the cord is for, it's uh, for the oil pan heater. That's uh, common uh, for machines in our shitty Canadian climate here to have such a thing to help um, warm up the engine so it's easier starting. Uh, really, it should have a frost plug heater, but I don't see frost plugs. Well, there's one back there, but it's not easy to get at. And then that would warm up the uh, water jacket around the machine. So I just dragged this home. Uh, we picked it up on Monday. Drove uh, well, as late as we could on Monday. It got to about Swift Current Saskatchewan, which isn't that far. But that's just how long it takes to get things sorted out. And then we uh, got from Swift Current all the way uh, home to, uh, or all the way here home uh, late Tuesday night. So it was a bit of a jaunt, that's for sure. But yeah, it's got a Yanmar motor. It's like around 35 or 37 horsepower, something like that. Um, it's got a DPF, uh, diesel particulate filter, um, which will get deleted at some point. Because uh, all they do is cause trouble. And... Um, and uh, yeah, it is a really nice little machine. Uh, the track speed's a little bit slow, unfortunately, but uh, where some of the competitors are quite a bit faster. I'm not really concerned about that. Most of my work is by the hour. <laughs> so yeah, controls are just the same as any other excavator for the most part. Uh, boom, stick, swing, bucket. And then um, this one is for the wrist bucket. Uh, I have a tilting bucket. Um, and uh, I can switch that so it would be over on that side, which I'm a little more comfortable with. But uh, I don't know. Sometimes you just choose to get used to these things. Um, this one has double auxiliary hydraulics. So that's why it's got a roller on each joystick. And currently it's set up so that the right joystick uh, turns the uh, mulcher here. This is a Balmolite MX330 mulcher. It's about the um, biggest mulchery that you could run on a machine like this. Like it's right at the uh, top there for capacity. Um, it's got a little, you can see the little lever there. That's for the little dozer blade on the back. It's got a radio, heat and air conditioning. Um, it's got the little monitor there. I didn't bring the key outside with me. We're kind of in between storms here right now. All we've been getting is nothing but snowstorms here in Manitoba, while Saskatchewan, Alberta, about as dry as a popcorn fart. And uh, and I know I just came from Lethbridge and there was absolutely no snow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as as far as I can tell, it's a really well built machine. You know, you've got reinforcements at the down at the bottom of the boom there. You've got the fish plating or whatever you want to call it down there. The king post here or swivel uh, is very well built. It's got replaceable pins and bushings. Everything can be greased. And um, uh, even here, like, you've got remote greasing because, you know, Chinese people are short. So <laughs> they put a grease nipple over there, which is fine by me. Um, I'm short too, so <laughs> it works just fine. Um, I should have brought my key with me. Otherwise, I could show you uh, everything else. But I'm also in my runners here, and the snow is kind of deep. It's got a little dozer blade. It could be a little bit taller, I think. But, I mean, you know, uh, you're getting a pretty good price with these machines compared to buying Kubota or some of the other manufacturers I was looking at. And something was leaking there. I'll have to check that out. Hope that's not bad. Um, I might have to tighten something up. So, other than that, um, grease nipples on the back of the boom could be a little more accessible. Um... But they're better than having them in the pin because the pin always seems to break when I see them on buckets and that. But they should be a little more accessible than that. Um, it's got a light on the boom. It's got two LED lights on the cab. It's got a flasher. Came with even with a little fire extinguisher. And here is your fuel tank and your hydraulic oil tank. And then there's a little toolbox in the front here that might be able to fit a grease gun. Which would be nice. So... Um, your hydraulic cylinder for the swivel is right here, and uh, I've got an AMI quick attach, it's just a, a typical Western Canadian mechanical quick attach, you pull the bolt out like on the bigger machines, 
and they always like to come loose unless you do them up with an impact but the uh, bigger machines will have two this just has one and then there's a little clip that's supposed to go in the back there I hadn't put back in yet because I was trying out the mulcher a few days ago uh, the mulcher is kind of made for two to four inch brush it uses basically a stump grinder type tooth on it it's a, car a carbide tooth and then they're a cup shape so after they wear down on one part then you can loosen up that nut on there and then you can turn it to the part that hasn't and you get about three turns out of each at least that's what they claim wait till you hit a piece of rock so um you know everything seems to be pretty good um there was a little bit of difficulty when i was at the dealership there um uh, they want they had said uh, well the salesman had called me and he said yeah the machine's ready they said that they had tested the brusher well it turns out the brush mulcher here hadn't been tested out and so when we got there it was turning backwards so it was a good thing we did test it out and so i guess they did whatever they need to do to make it turn the right way and um so that's all good now and uh there's the wrist bucket it's an ami 36 inch tilt bucket um it's pretty standard fare i mean on it's basically built the same way as the big machines except it's just got one cylinder that tilts it instead of two um it, they're really well built buckets um i never had any trouble with them other than maybe blowing hydraulic hoses but you know that happens with everything and then i've got a 24 inch tooth bucket right there sitting in the snow I kind of put everything in the back here so you know I don't have to worry too much about anybody stealing them so yeah I've got Stucci couplings on here I'm not a big fan of them they always get plugged up with gunk and I've got a different style I don't know what these are called but they kind of got this different kind of uh they got a different setup there and I like them better they're a lot simpler so with Stucci's they always got threads that get gunked up and everything and you got to, you're not supposed to have to use a wrench but you always end up having to use a wrench to try to, to take them on or off so that might get changed out at some point for something else uh pioneer couplings I don't like that much but they were not bad on a smaller machine um as far as a cab it's not a big guy friendly I'm not particularly big I'm about 220 pounds I should lose weight I guess but whatever um but I mean it is a zero turn or zero tail swing machine so you know you get it's just the way it is and for me it works just fine I'm comfortable and there I farted around with it and moved some snow with a ditching bucket and got the oil all warmed up but I think it's going to be a couple weeks before I uh can really do anything with it um so it's it's gonna get cold after today we're gonna be in the minus 20s or so for at least the next two weeks kind of minus 18 to you know, minus 30 something for the next two weeks unfortunately and we've had a lot of that this year it's getting annoying and as you can see by the snow piles we've got a lot of snow there's probably around three feet here so it's never good for manitoba because then that can always lead to flooding in the spring if it starts melting now then we might be okay but it's a lot of friggin snow you see even my camper here uh, my uh, sort of overland camper here has kind of been inundated but yeah so then i got a big trailer for it i got a 22 foot triaxle trailer and uh we had a blizzard come through yesterday it howled all day at a 55 mile an hour or 80 kilometer an hour wind something like that so that was all cleared out before that storm i had that all cleared out with the mini and the tractor now i'm walking through another four or five inches of snow and uh the wind just comes out of the north blows it all from the road in here so i'm going to try and plant kind of a shelter belt at the front there it's a 22 foot trailer so it's a real beast to get in my driveway i'm gonna have to widen part of my driveway out it's a monster so it's really right at the limit of what i could tow with my three quarter ton but here the land is flat so i don't have to worry too much with the hills but yeah you need this is a 12,000 pound machine so each axle is good for 7,000 pounds so it brings you for a gross vehicle weight or a gross trailer weight of uh, 14 or uh, 21,000 pounds whereas if it was tandem it would only be good for 14 so you'd just be slipping by with a machine that size so so yeah and I got it in here just by using a tractor I put the uh, pintle hitch on the three point 
hitch of the tractor and then I was able to scooch it in here. So hopefully uh, this crap starts melting. See, I put all that snow up there. I had a big snow bank right where the truck was sitting. So right where the trailer is sitting. So I scooped that all out and I think I took out a couple of my tree seedlings sadly by accident. But uh, yeah, I've got some work for coming up in the summer too or maybe into the early fall with a local conservation group. They want some fence lines brushed. So that's why I've got the mulcher on there. And um, I'll get some municipal work likely with it too. So and uh, some private stuff as well. But yeah, that's the beast. That's the trailer there. It's a nice trailer. They're made in Lethbridge by Southland Trailers. I bought it in High River. Uh, that's where the dealer was. And I was lucky they had one. I wanted a gooseneck, but they want like 20 grand for a gooseneck, so that wasn't gonna happen. Especially after you spend uh, as much as I did on the Mini X. Took the box scraper off the tractor there because I put the pintle hitch on the tractor on that three point there. This is great for snow plowing actually. I just back up to the door here where all the snow is and I drop the box blade and pull it away so I can push into a pile with the bucket. See, here's what I did. Oh, nice and warm in here. So I've got this three point hitch attachment here and then I can put my pintle on there and then I'm good to go. So. And it'll lift it. It'll lift it, no problem. That, that trailer is actually pretty well balanced. I didn't get any wiggle woggle out of it down the highway, so I had enough tongue weight with a spare bucket and a mulcher on the uh, front there, so worked out pretty good. So this might get sold in the spring. I can't really use it much for my business. Nobody will pay me what it's worth. And... Uh, it's handy for around the yard, I'll give it that. Let's kick the snow off my shoes here. It's handy around the yard, and uh, not much more really. I've used it on a few jobs, but nobody wants to, nobody takes it seriously as a machine that you can do anything with, and you can do stuff, uh, spreading topsoil, a bit of gravel here and there, but hey, you pretty much gotta have a skid steer. So I'll probably sell it. I'll get by with a quad with a blade on it. My neighbor's got a big tractor with like a 100 horsepower Massey Ferguson with a snowblower on it. So if I get inundated like we are this year, then I can get him to uh, clean it out. Because I still got the Can M800 here that I'll put a snow plow on. I'll probably put a 72 inch snow plow on it uh, maybe in the fall or something if uh, this thing sells. And uh, yeah, so. Everybody thinks I'm asking too much for it, but it's actually kind of worth it because I don't have many hours on it. It's only 180 hours. And uh, I'm going to get the emissions deleted on it because they cause me nothing but trouble. Um, you, you almost can't do anything sometimes when the emissions go on or when the uh, regen thing goes on. And then sometimes it's back to back. You have one and then you work a little bit and then it'll start all over again. So uh, I'm going to get that deleted and that requires... Taking off the loader arms, the hood, uh, taking out the CPU, mailing it to a place in New York State. They'll delete it on the computer. Then I'll have to take out the innards and the muffler, uh, which is basically a filter mechanism and a catalyst. And then put it all back together minus those parts. And then she'll breathe properly and actually have more horsepower. So... It's not a bad tractor. I don't mind sitting in there, that's for sure. Especially when it's hot out and I got the AC on, or if it's cold out and I got the heat on. It, in one way or another, it's pretty good. But uh, it just doesn't work for my business. A skid steer with high flow hydraulics would be the best. And I can put a snowblower on it, or a mulcher, or even a mower, or whatever. So, and that's that's the direction I'm going. So, and I'll sell it with the big bucket and all whatever implements I've got left for it. So I've got the more up for sale separately so we'll see uh we'll see if somebody wants to buy the whole kit and caboodle i've had a guy that's interested in the more but he can never seem to come out and pick it up so we'll see what happens with that too so yeah